Hi everyone and welcome to lesson four for year nine uh, based on our tour of world music. This today is going to be a lesson based around score reading and Bangra. For this lesson you will need to have your workbook with you and a pen. Lesson objectives for today's lesson, uh, quite similar to previous lessons, you'll be listening and analysing a new genre of music today that is obviously going to be Bangra. Uh, I'd like to know if anybody knows anything about that beforehand, so if you do, pause the video now and just have a quick write down of anything that you know anywhere on your page. I'd also like you to feel more confident with score reading and to be able to understand key features of Bangra. You're used to these do nows now, it's our listening diary, but today's piece is going to be a piece um, of Bangra by Punjabi NC. Now, you may think this is quite a strange genre to be looking at today, um, but the reason for this is ultimately it has come up in past GCSE uh, exams and therefore I think it'd be a good thing for us to look at style-wise. Um, the piece today I'd like to look at is Morni Bale Bale. This piece uh, I'd like you to look at and listen to, but be focusing mainly on the tempo, the structure, the instrumentation, pitch and dynamics, as you have done in the past. As a little bit of a, an extension to that today, I'd like you to start making your own judgment about these genres. So do you like this style of music or this genre? Why or why not? And make sure to back up your response with real musical reasons. You can't just say, because I liked it. Pause the video now. Uh, the link to Punjabi MC's track will be in the description. Please open that in a new tab and write down your ideas. Press pause now. Moving on to score reading, uh, we have two options for this section of today's lesson. Option one is focus on sound, um, which is the application that we've been given access to for this coming year. On there, you'll see that I have set you a lesson on score reading um, and that is interactive and it will make sure that you listen, follow scores and are able to understand how to read them, but also how to read uh, small and large scores at the same time. Um, please make sure to use the link that is on the screen now. If you have issues with logging into Focus on Sound or you can't navigate your way around it, please email me in the first instance. Um, I'll be able to resort out passwords, I'll be able to resort out anything that you need, so please just get in touch. If for any reason I'm not getting back to you, you can't access Focus on Sound or there's some technical issues, I'd like you to use option two. So using the score in your workbook, you'll see that for activity 4.2, uh, there is actually a score of the Prince of Denmark March. Um, on that score, I would like you to please find as many of the following things uh, as you can. And I mean multiple versions of the same thing. It might be that you want to give each of them a different colour uh, so that you can identify and quickly see on your score which ones you've identified. Personally, that's what I'm going to be doing on the next slide uh, as I go through a couple of them. Obviously, utilise as, as much of the time as possible, but I would also listen to the piece as well. Uh, the Trumpets March, um, it's for a trumpet, funnily enough, uh, the Prince of Denmark's March. Please make sure that you are listening to it as well. Um, it's always good to do that. Pause the video here uh, if you need to for that option. Just a few answers to help you out then. Um, obviously, I'm doing this on a computer that's kind of not great, so I'm only going to do a couple of them. Um, top line here uh, is mainly the trumpet melody uh, that you hear, you heard, and then obviously this is the accompaniment. Now, this is what we call a short score. Okay, you can see that it's ultimately just the two lines here. Other times that you could see that is sometimes this could be a piano score. So it's got the um, the right hand part at the top and the left hand part at the bottom. Just so that you've got some ideas of uh, what these things look like. OK, um, number one, a crotchet, remember, is our one beat note and it looks like that. Remember, there's you could use all of these in the next couple of bars as well. Uh, a quaver, if I just go backwards. A little bit. You 
can see a quaver there. Our quaver, remember, is our half beat note. OK, this is a bit of a tough one. I was just ask, actually asking you to just write on to this or any instruments that you could hear. So for this top line, you could say that you heard a trumpet. OK, for number three, I'm not expecting you to have tried to find that on the score. And if you did, well done. Um, but don't worry. Tempo markings. This is me being really tricky. There aren't any on this score. Um, this was the whole point. I wanted to see whether you could notice that normally a tempo marking would be around here or potentially could be at the start here of a new section and same here. These are just these little things here are just saying new section. OK, moving on to our key signature. Remember, always comes at the start of each line. And this tells me two sharps from what we learned last lesson. This piece is in D major. Now, trills, these ones are a little bit funny. Sometimes they might be written like that, but sometimes they might also be written as just TR above um, the note that's written. So look out for those that a couple of ways of writing that on a score. Obviously, this is something that you need to be knowing okay, as you're going forward because melodic devices are key in the GCSE. OK, repeat marks. OK, two dots tell me that I'm to go backwards to the beginning. So that's an end repeat mark. OK. And then crotchet rest. Can you find any crotchet rests on there? I found one straight away right in front of me. That's a really bad drawing of it. Apologies. Go for that one. I hope that your score is covered in lots of different colours or lots of different annotations. Uh, if you've missed anything or you didn't quite know how something looks, please make sure to look it up uh, and go through onto the next section. Moving on to a little bit of recall and um, what you learnt last lesson. So obviously last lesson you were looking at reggae as a style. Um, so for this, I'd like you to think about the following five questions. So where does um, reggae as a style come from? Uh, three features, key features of reggae are. Just pick three that you think you'd like to go through. Um, what do you think most reggae songs are about? What do you think a riff is? And can you name three famous reggae artists? Pause the video now and give yourself around two minutes to answer these questions. Time to go through them. Let's go through some answers. So where does reggae music come from? It comes from Jamaica. Please make sure that you are marking these in the column in your workbooks too. Three key features of reggae. Uh, you can have any of the following. So it's got a 4-4 time signature, slower tempo, simple repetitive harmony. Remember that's often around the tonic dominant and the subdominant. So that's one, five and four uh, of any chord structure. Uh, use a syncopation. So using the off beats, OK, accents on the second and fourth beat, which which really do support that and loud bass riffs. What are reggae songs about? Mainly they are about everyday life, local events and local people. Uh, a riff is a short melodic phrase that is repeated over and over and um, often found in rock and pop music. You might also think that riffs are quite similar um, to ostinatos in their definition but they are quite different have a look on focus on sound to really understand the differences between them as i don't have time to go through today three famous reggae artists could have many there's plenty of them these are just some examples so you could have bob marley as i discussed last lesson quite one of the most famous uh, reggae artists you could also have ub40 they they are a little bit kind of diverse around that. Some people say they are, some people say they aren't. Peter Tosh, uh, Jimmy Cliff, Wailing Souls, and there are many more. Please make sure that you have marked that as you go through and make sure that you make any corrections in the boxes as well. Now, time to move on to a completely different style to the one that you learned last lesson. Um, Bangra is completely different. Uh, it comes from the Punjabi region of India. Now, obviously, we have travelled from the Caribbean to India very quickly this week um, but this is purely just because I think it's a really good style for you to learn and as I said earlier on the whole purpose of this is 
these will come up on your exams, these, these world music genres. Um, so I want you to have as much of a understanding of as many of them as you possibly can. So modern Bangra became uh, and began in the Punjabi region uh, and it developed, you know, most of its features from that. And it's very traditionally a very traditional style of music. It didn't have the fusion that it does nowadays. Uh, nowadays, it's fused quite heavily with electronic music and therefore uh, has had a massive impact on the Eastern and Western music styles coming together. So looking at the genre first and foremost, so as I've just said, originally it was a type of folk music from the Punjab region uh, in India. Now, that has a massive impact because originally it was used to celebrate special events um, such as the harvest uh, and therefore lots of the lyrics that were sung were related to workers in the fields, um, but also quite often they were annual events that they, they sang about. More recently, though, um, kind of in the last 50 years, this style of Bangra has definitely kind of changed. Um, it's it's less traditional as it, you know, has adapted. Uh, nowadays, there's much more fusion uh, within that. Remember, fusion is a combination of two or more musical styles put together. OK, so in this instance, you would kind of say it's electronic with uh, the traditional Indian Bangra. Um, Within that, they, they might use some sampling, they might use synthesizers. If you're still struggling with kind of what those ideas are, please pause the video now and just have a little bit of a look as to what they are to remind yourselves. And quite traditionally in a lot of uh, Indian and Eastern music, the rhythms, melodies, everything were taught vocally first. So they would have to learn by ear. Um, that's still quite common, still happens today, um, but you would have to have learnt it vocally before you put anything on instruments. Um, moving on now to melody and harmony, we unsurprisingly kind of think about melody and harmony as being these lovely lyrical melodies that you'd expect in the Western world. Now, the slight different in, in Bangra, they mainly moved by step so they are often conjunct melodies and they're very melismatic so they have lots of uh, notes being sung to one syllable they are often microtonal um not use of microtones in there uh, especially in their intervals that basically means that they use um there are notes between our semitones that we use in, in western harmony and they use every single one of those microtones within their within this style the lyrics are traditionally sung in Punjabi, and that is kind of exactly what you'd expect. The example that you listened earlier on uh, had some examples of that. The simple harmonies, really simple harmonies to support the, the melisma in the melodies that you heard before. Rhythm, metre and tempo, these obviously kind of go hand in hand, and we do have to know about all of these, quite similar to other styles of music that you've looked at recently. Uh, it has a 4-4 four -four time signature with a fast tempo. Sometimes that is slowed down a little bit and it's more of a, mo uh, a moderate tempo. However, um, most of that comes from um, just wanting to be a little bit different. Percussion accents uh, on the first beat to really emphasise the downbeat. This is because originally as well, Bangra is a style of dance. So it, it, aids and helps uh, dancers to understand where the first beat of the bar is and it uses a char rhythm now the little example that you can see there is a char rhythm and you'll also notice that there's slight different um wording underneath now that is to do with the different um tone sounds that you would use on a drum first and foremost on on the styles of drums on the doll that they'd use that to me is really interesting because they the da basically is a different tone sound to the na. Um, and they would obviously, as I said earlier, learn it vocally and then pass it on to the instruments. Moving on to structure, um, very similar to pop music nowadays, it really does follow the verse chorus form um, and has a very similar features to pop music. Um, as you would have in a pop song, you may potentially have a guitar solo or an instrumental middle eight. Um, in Bangra, that is often a sitar solo. 
instrumentation and timbre. Um, nowadays, there's obviously the, the mixture of the two, uh, the traditional instruments with the, the music technology, and there's still mainly a lead uh, vocalist, whether that be male or female. Um, they use the traditional instruments of the doll, the sitar and the tumbi. They use others as well. Uh, and I would definitely invite you to do a little bit of research on your own in a second to really look into that. They use drum machines, samplers and synthesizers as well on the electronic side. Looking at the texture and kind of the dynamic side of things, texture is mainly melody and accompaniment and they use a lot of call and response uh, as I think you'd expect. It, it kind of lends itself to the learning vocally as well. Um, passing on rhythms uh, through that way. Dynamics wise, it's usually very, very loud. Um, obviously, you know, not all the time, there will be moments where it, it comes away, but it is still meant to be a celebratory style of music. Just a little bit more information just before you go on and move on to the next task. Um, it has become a much more commercial success uh, since the 1970s. Pajabi MC, uh, who you listened to at the start of the lesson, is one of the most famous um, Bangra fusion artists that you'll come across. And it's almost the one that everybody knows about. Um, films as, such as Slumdog Millionaire really made Bangra as both a music and also a style of dance uh, become a lot more mainstream and a lot more people know about it. And therefore it's kind of diversified a lot of people into that culture and to, into that world. Um, it's a huge part of the, the Bollywood film industry, which I know you touch on in, in dance, and it's estimated to be worth about $3.7 billion, um, which is just outstanding. Um, fusion, as more technological advances come through, people will try to to use technology in a lot of different ways. I know that that's what I'm something that I've been looking at at this moment in time. They are pushing music in different ways and fusing different styles that not necessarily haven't been used uh, together before. And because of the kind of popularity of Bangra music as a style, the dancing has become more popular and it is one of the most common styles within the Punjab region. Um, the largest Bangra dance was performed by over 21,000 people, um, which I think is just outstanding. Now, having listened to me for far too long, uh, your activity for 4.5 um, is to create a quiz for year seven uh, or a poster based on Bangra music uh, and also utilise your own research. Don't just listen to what I have said. Go away, look at Focus on Sound, look at different ways, look at different um, ways that you could portray this. Think about different artists, try and listen to some different music. Push yourselves, don't just do the bare minimum. Thanks for listening and look forward to speaking soon. Bye.